River, Minnesota. This is where we slept overnight. I just went across the street now, grabbed myself a coffee, and I'm ready for the day. So today, I'm gonna unload this lumber that we loaded yesterday. It's under the tarp. We're gonna take the tarps off, get in their lumber, and then we're gonna drag our empty trailer down to Shakopee, Minnesota. We have a load there to pick up. That's part of Minneapolis once again. We're gonna pick up our load there. We have a loading appointment at 4 p.m. We should make it, no problem. And then we're gonna start heading home. So we're not gonna make it home tonight yet, but we'll be home tomorrow. It's a beautiful day again for trucking. Just about coming up to Brainerd here already. Gotta quickly get unloaded and then uh, rush on down to Minneapolis. Once again, an empty trailer. That was a nice quick one. Now it's time to go down to Shakopee, Minnesota. I love delivering here. The receiver is such a nice guy. Usually they would be going home around the time about when I got here. I called ahead and uh, it was nice enough to stay a little bit longer to get me unloaded. And now that I have an empty trailer, I can go put new stuff on it and make some money going home. I thought I'd be going home empty. And I was like, ah, I guess that's what I gotta do. I gotta get home for the weekend, gotta get old blue polished. I guess I'm gonna have to go home empty. Nope. The load gods came through for me and they found me some freight to put on my trailer. Now I can get paid to go home the way it should be. I should have plenty of time, but you do also have to add extra time for traffic in Minneapolis. Since my appointment's at 4 o'clock and I gotta be there around that time, I can't be too early. That means I'll be driving right into afternoon rush hour. It's hard to guess how much extra time you need. All depends on how traffic is behaving and if there's any fender benders or accidents that can really slow things down. Today is not a Friday, so at least you don't have the, the cottage crowd, you know, plugging up the roads, going to their cottages and cabins. Not as much anyway. Just the lucky ones who get to go take off a day early.
talking about Mankato last weekend at home. Mankato. Some of you guys live out here. I wonder how close I am to you right now. What a nice day though. 500 meters, keep to the left on, US 169 Mankato. US 169 South Mankato. Yep, I know my turn's here. Just stay straight, that's all you gotta tell me. Keep going straight. I'm six kilometers away now from Shakopee. Five kilometers. Take the R83 Canterbury Road. My measurements are all messed up. I use both. I use American measurements and Canadian measurements, like any good Canadian does. The outside temperature is always in Celsius. Inside temperature could either be Fahrenheit or Celsius, depending on the household. Ours is Celsius. Most Canadians are in Fahrenheit, I believe. Cooking temperature on your oven, always in Fahrenheit temperature of, you know, oil temperature or water temperature of a motor, like in my truck here, Fahrenheit. But if you're talking about outside temperature, Celsius. If you're talking about weights, weights on a truck, kilograms. But weights, if you weigh yourself on a scale, pounds. We're a big mess. We should have just stuck with the miles and the old metrics, I mean, the, we changed over to the metric in what, the 60s? The last Trudeau guy did that, he changed us over to metric. We used to be just like the US, miles an hour, feet, inches, ounces, pounds, and he changed us over. Because part of the Canadian identity is to separate ourselves from the American identity, because we're so similar, probably we're the exact same people, but our, it seems like Canada's whole goal is just to prove to the world that we're different in some way. We always gotta be different. We're not American, we're Canadian. I'm sort of like that too. I mean, yeah, we're different. We have different histories, but we all come from the same place. I mean, we all came from over the Atlantic. We came here, we built two new countries and we did a pretty good job, I'd say. Yeah, they're going pretty well, I mean, they need a little maintenance, I'll tell you that much. We haven't been maintaining them very well, but they're good countries. Oh yeah, and distance is in kilometers as well. As a Canadian, distance is always in kilometers. But if you're talking generally, then it's in miles. And as a truck driver, I get paid, well, I get paid percentage of the load. But if you're getting paid One kilometer, take for distance driven Canterbury in Canada, Turn right for 190 meters. if you're paid by distance, you're paid by the mile, even as a Canadian driver. So it's, it's all over the place. I can't explain it. I don't know what's going on. I've got my new load behind me, and we're in St. Cloud, Minnesota. They got the cheapest juice again. I'm going to go fill her on up. I got about a... Well, a little over a third of tanks left. Let's swing in here, grab some fuel. 364 per gallon, US. As opposed to $4 a gallon up in the Grand Forks. Or $3.96, something as opposed to way more in Canada. I don't really like stopping here because it's always a gong show to get in there and I can see it already. Line up onto the street. Yep, trucks lined up onto the street. In 100 meters, turn left on Clearwater Road. Well, this is fun. I parked in a way that I'm not blocking the road, but this guy in front of me is blocking the entire road. So just a heads up if you do that, it's not very nice. Oh, 
Oh, that car is just squeaking by him. Oh, oh. Yikes. Absolute chaos. Absolute chaos. Man. Exactly why I don't like coming in here. It is chaos. Very small lot to begin with. And for some reason, I've noticed that this specific place that uh, guys will stay parked in the pumps for a little bit longer than they maybe should. But that happens everywhere though too, right? I mean, I, maybe I'm just, because I've been stopping here more often, maybe I notice that. It's mostly, I guess, the size of the lot. We got this guy going out backwards against the arrow. There's an arrow right on the ground right there. Check this out. There's an arrow on the ground right there. You see it? arrow to go that way and he's going that way behind us chaos and the guy in front of me isn't fueling maybe he's done but there's a guy parked in front of him in front of the pump blocking the pump so even if he's done he can't go and we're lined up out onto the street so it's a little bit of a hit and miss sometimes you come here and it's not bad a lot of times you come here it's all filled up like this that might be for the same reason I'm here it's cheapest fuel on I 94 west of Minneapolis. It is what it is. Hopefully, it won't take too long. North Star Truck Wash. It's at the Stay Mart on the north side of Fargo off I-29. I-29 is literally right behind me over there. I'm gonna be honest, I'm trying something new today. I've never been to North Star. I usually go to the Blue Beacon over on the other side of town uh, at the Petro. But the guy who does my polishing uh, requested that I get the truck acid washed before I bring it to him to make sure it's all nice and clean, makes it a lot easier on his side. And I said, ah, that's no problem. No problem at all. Whatever I can do to make your job easier, right? So uh, he recommended North Star because apparently they do a much better job than Blue Beacon. So it's my first time here. And let's see how good they do. I don't know what their prices are, but they should be pretty competitive to the, to the, to the Blue Beacon, right? I mean, that would be their main competitor. Well, we'll see. They're open 24 hours, except for Fridays and Saturdays, when they close from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. I guess just to clean the place out and, or something. But 
we're here, it's 10 p.m. Let's uh, see what they can do. I always love getting truck water. It's like going to the spa for me too. It's like, it makes me feel good. Looks like they're letting the guy in front of me in. Moving up. That means we're next. Same idea as the Blue Beacon. They got a whole crew of guys in there that'll wash it all off for you. Gotta wait our turn. Alright everybody, you want to see the finished product? I think they did a pretty good job. I'm actually very impressed. I will be coming here instead of Blue Beacon from now on. So we got the whole truck acid washed and that's to prepare it for polishing tomorrow. Like, that is clean. Clean, clean, clean. Look at those steps. Imagine how good they're gonna look after they're polished. And the tanks. So we got all the dirt and grime off of them. Using the wheels in the back. Looks way better already. Now I'm playing a bit of a risky game here. <laughs> I'm gonna drive up, cause I got some hours left on my clock. I'm gonna drive up a little closer to home in the dark here. Usually in the summertime, this would cover my truck in bugs, my clean truck. But I think it's early enough in the season that there's not too many bugs out. There are some, but not too many. I'm playing a bit of a risky game here. So hopefully I don't get my truck covered in bugs. If I do, I mean I can just rinse it off tomorrow morning before I bring it in for the polish, but I wanna get closer to home because I don't wanna have such a long drive tomorrow. Still in the US. I'm still here. And it's morning time. My uh, border paperwork, uh, something got messed up or something, 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 something happened, I don't know. And I couldn't get cleared last night yet. So I had to wait here at the border in Pembina. But that's okay, whatever. It's morning time. We're cleared now. At least I'm told we are. I'm just gonna double check. Well, let's double check. There's usually like a PARS tracker that most brokers have. As long as you know who the broker is, you can check to see if your PARS has passed. That's my customs clearance. I don't know what PARS stands for. P-A-R-S. Eh. <laughs> Probably. Okay, come on. Where's the uh, shipment tracking? Why is it not giving me the option? Oh, it's hot in here. Let's open some windows. Oh. It, got, it suddenly got hot very fast. Okay, well, my shipment tracker's not working right now. 
That's inconvenient. Maybe I just need my glasses on. My glasses on so I can see the world in HD. I can see just fine right now. I can read all the signs around here. I'm, I'm fine. It's just everything's got a little bit of a little bit of a fuzzing in a little bit. I can still read everything just fine, but then you put these bad boys on. Whoo! HD 4K. Oh, there it is. See, that's all I needed to see in my glasses. <laughs> That's weird. Okay, and it worked just fine. It popped up as not I put those on. Okay, let's see. Am I clear? Declaration accepted, awaiting arrival of goods. Nice. Good. We're set to go. So thanks for joining me today. Uh, I'm gonna continue this tomorrow. Uh, tune in then, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and we'll hang out some more then. Take care.